Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here and welcome back to the latest Clan Scurvy video. Now in the last three videos I showed you guys how I converted up the three Storm Fiends. We had the ranged guy, we had the melee guy and then we had the guy who was a bit of a combination of both. He had some melee, well he had his hand, a big arm and he had a ranged weapon as well. But for the final video with these guys I'm going to show you how I painted them up. Now there's a slight variation between the three even with the skin tone but I'll get to that when it comes to it at the end. But I started off with this guy with Cadian Flesh Tone. Now I usually try to avoid Cadian Flesh Tone because it takes so long. It takes a lot of thin layers to get it to really, to get a real prominent color or prominent layer. Um, so it was five thin layers and really thin it out because you don't want this getting too thick. But once you get those layers on and it's it kind of dries and it looks really good, it's kind of worth it in the end if you have time to do it. And moved on to the metal parts then, which was of course lead belt drawn anything I wanted metal. Um, and then for, I wanted these parts to be bronze, but I didn't really have to paint then. So I went with Retributor armor, so I worked it okay in the end, but I would have really liked to have more of a bronze color on some of the other parts. Um, so then we have to move on to the cloth, which you have to get the yellow one. You have to get the clan scurvy colors, the Avalanche Sunset. Um, it's a very prominent part of the models. Uh, for his weapons, uh, the wooden parts there I went with Morn Frank Brown it's a very reliable color it's your kind of go-to for like medium to, to light lightish brown it's more of a medium I suppose um, and it always works it doesn't really do anything it always works Um then we went on to the skull on the back which is done with Zandri dust um, and then for little parts of her, he doesn't have a whole lot of fire. I went with dry yard bark just for a different color. I think some of them I might have went with gray because I like to give all different scale and uh, different kind of colored fur. So any of the straps and anything like that I did, I went with Abaddon black uh, just to give him that solid dark color. Um, and then I went with Rackard flesh for any of the raw parts, uh, the teeth and the nails on his foot and his hands. And um, just to kind of give it a little bit of a different color from uh, the Zandri dust from the bone. So once all those base coats were put, oh actually it's still on the, on, there's the nails and uh, the toenails, or kind of the claws as well. But once all them base colors uh, dry and they're ready to go for the next phase, I went with a shade of Reichland Flesh shade all over uh, the skin, um, which I was a bit nervous about because it took so long to get the skin right and here I am just pouring uh, Reichland Flesh shade all over, but it does work out. And um, pretty much everything else um, I went over with Agrax or Shade, except a few parts. Um, I didn't want to go with Nullin Oil because I wanted it to look dirty rather than darker. Um, so it kind of worked out alright. But with the bone parts and probably the teeth as well, uh, I went over with Seraphim Sepia because I didn't want it to be too dark. Um, I wanted that kind of like sun dried look on the bone and on the teeth and everything like that. Um, and not too dark with the Agrax Art Shed. So once that was all dry, I started applying Cadian Flesh Tone again over the skin tones to brighten up uh, the higher parts. And um, again, this is probably like two or three tin layers. I can't really remember precisely, but it's it is it's time consuming, but it's really worth it to get that skin tone looking like that. Um, then we went moved on to the bone. Now I really I didn't want to do too many strong edge highlights on this model. I wanted to have that dirty, rusty, piratey look. So I went with a, a lot more dry brushing than I usually do. So I went over the bone with Rackard Flesh just to get the, that real dusty dry brush look. And I did the same with uh, the tree, I call them tree trunks, but it's like the handles, the wooden handles for his weapons with uh, Steel Legion Drab. And it was a bit brighter than I thought it was gonna be, but it had, kinda gives it a dusty look as well. So it worked out in the end. And then with the fire I went over with Steel Legion Drab as well. Now onto this part. Now this was my first time, I think it was my first time in a long time, trying uh, Typhus Corrosion. And this is to give them that really, really rusty, dirty, uh, well used, not looked after look on their weapons and on their armor. So, ooh, <laughs> I, maybe I, sh I should have really practiced this before I went uh, and did it on this. But I applied it to all the metal parts and it really looks like it's going to be uh, too much on it. But once it dries, it's like really watery. It's very thin. Uh, but once it dries, it has like this texture on it. And it just works. It's It really is an amazing 
uh, paint they have. It, what For what it does uh, and the transformation it can give metal, it's really good. So I moved on to a few highlights then. I went with uh, Dawnstone over the black. And then for the yellow, I didn't mind doing a high or doing a strong uh, highlight edge on the yellow because with your real yellow uh, onto the roll because I wanted the yellow to be really prominent I wanted that to stick out so for a strong edge highlight on that I didn't mind it I kind of liked it and um, so then I moved on this is the next part for the metal I went over with a dry brush of riser rust now this is this combination of typhus corrosion and riser rust is fantastic and I kind of thought I went over a bit too much. It looked like there was just too much orange, too much rust, and it kind of covered the whole metal. But once you really start putting the highlights over it, it really gives it that worn out, chipped looking, damaged look, you know, that you kind of, that I was really wanting to get. Um, and I did it on everything. I kind of, I kind of went overboard a little bit, if anything. Um, with the weapons, um, his armor, the brazers, I think they're called. That, they were the most prominent parts, the brazers. So I wanted to get them just right. And then to kind of pull it back a little bit, I dry brushed with Stormhole Silver, which I kind of thought, it done. that's a really strong highlight as well. I think maybe I didn't rub enough off on the dry brush. Um, so I kind of really had to take my time. But I think this brazier on the right side is a bit better, uh, for an example, because there's like a lot less of it on the other brazier. But it looks really well, it came out uh, like it was rusty, old, and that's really the look I was going for. So just very, very lightly use the dry brush of Stormhole Silver over it, and just to catch the, the edges, the high edges sticking out, you know, the usual stuff you'd try and do when you're highlighting, but just with a dry brush. And then for some reason I went over the back part as well. And I made sure to get his helmet as well, I kind of forgot that. Um, a little bit near the end. Now to kind of dirty up his robe a little bit, I gave it a dry brush of Mornfang Brown. Um, well, not his robe, his cloth, because it's too clean. As much as a, the edge highlight that I like on it, we can't have a clean cloth like that sticking out. So I dry brushed uh, Mornfang Brown over it to give it a more dirty uh, look. Now, the final part is, well, one of the final parts is his, he has a lot of stitches going around which are really cool looking and I really wanted them to look like they're still kind of openish or that they're still kind of sore or fresh so I went over all them with Carabur Crimson I think I might have done two lots of it and I kind of did a little bit of Carabur Crimson in some parts of the flesh as well to make give it that kind of sore look that raw like it's infected or if it's like really like a cut wound or something and of course with Riken Flesh Shed I had to go over his nipples a little bit to kind of highlight them a little bit to kind of fade it away uh, blend it into the chest a little bit and then I highlighted uh, the teeth with Screaming Skull and the claws as well or the nails as well to get that last and final little highlight onto the model and there you have it there is all three of them I really tried to fit these in to this video here so I kind of I got them to rotate the same way so you can get a good look at each one now as you can see the other two have a different skin tone that is with Bugman's glow because I really didn't want to spend way more time than I need, needed to do when uh, Katie and Flesh on it would look great but it would have taken way too long and this video wouldn't have been out now it would have been out like maybe a week or two down at the line but overall the tree even matched the look you can see the rusted look on the metal that i was going for uh, even on their uh, handlers as well that i have it so i'm happy how it turned out it was really fun painting these guys i really enjoyed it they're a lot of fun to paint a lot of fun to convert up so if you guys like them make sure to let me know and keep an eye out for the next video because i'm going to be continuing the clan scurvy army slash warband so there's going to be a couple more things coming up over the next couple of weeks so if you guys like this video make sure to hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the next video